Welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited to greet you for this best selling author interview today because we have an amazing, extraordinary author who's just launched her book. But of course, as you know, here in Thought Leader Academy world, um, those of you launching books are not just authors, right? With your visionaries, leaders, creating legacies. So I'm so thrilled to introduce you to the amazing and brilliant Betsy Papine, who has a brand new book that's just launched. launched. Betsy, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. So happy you're here. I'm going to show everybody this fabulous book, Breaking Boxes, and we're really getting into dismantling the metaphorical boxes that bind us. I imagine everyone listening to this is going to automatically, if you paused this recording, be able to hypothesize there might be a box that you are still living in that might still be constricting you in some way. So um, Betsy, before we talk about this amazing book and um, and what you're going to help us do through the book, would you let everyone know where you live, what you do, and what brought you to this place of wanting to share your wisdom in the book? Okay, sure. So I, am, I live in Gainesville, Florida, where I was, I've been here since I was five, I'm born in Philadelphia, live here. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur in all things real estate. So I have a real estate brokerage, I have a title company, I have a real estate school, I have a property management company, and I also have a nonprofit, which I'm passionate about, which um, provides affordable housing to yeah. um, cost burden families in our um, in North Central Florida. So all things real estate. Yes. Um, not writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first, the first. Probably never. Was writing ever a, a vision you had? Like was writing a book a thing you thought about at younger times? You know, it was never a thing, but when I started writing, I realized, one, I've always journaled, always kept mm -hmm. a journal, always kept a diary. Mm -hmm. And then I did, actually, I had totally forgotten when I was in the seventh or eighth grade, I started writing a novel and I would, I would take the chapters to school and the kids would, my, my classmates would all want to read the next chapter and I don't even have it anymore, but I had totally forgotten I had done that, you know, in the seventh or eighth grade, but, but no, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a writer. Well, that's amazing that it was in you, that there was a part. And obviously, like some of us are called, we want to write because we love the craft or like you at that age when you were writing this novel and, and kids were like, what's going to happen next? That beautiful art of storytelling. And sometimes we write a book because we're on a mission. There's, there's, there's something we're bringing forth in the world and, and this new book, um, the not the novel, although I hope you find it at some point because that would be amazing <laughs> to kind of you know bring that out. Um, but tell us about why you wanted to write this book and why now. So when I was in my, I'm 55 years old. When I was in my mid to late 40s, I came to the realization that despite checking off all the boxes of what I thought I was supposed to do to be successful and happy. Yeah. I, wa I was successful in my business, but I was not happy. Mm. And um, it actually took me a year to even admit that to myself because yeah. um, I didn't feel like I had the right not to be happy, right. um, which I recognize now is, a, is, I think a lot of women feel that way. Mm. Anyway, so through a process, uh, several years of continually journaling, meditation, yoga, therapy, bioenergetics. I mean, I, I tried everything, <laughs> trying to uncover what it was. And the common thread was this feeling of containment. Mm -hmm. And to the point sometimes of rage, where I felt like I was in these boxes that sometimes I put myself in, sometimes, you know, I allowed others to put me in. Mm -hmm. Society puts pressure on us to be in in mm -hmm. some boxes genders do that our roles in life do that and so i i was so tired of feeling like i wasn't my authentic self and i was just mm -hmm. um it truly was i thought i was the movie um the truman show jim carrey yeah. you know living this ordinary life oblivious to the fact that it's being orchestrated on a set built by others so so that's what i felt like and so when i started writing these stories I was like, oh my gosh. And I started sharing them. I recognized this seems to be a universal, um, not problem, opportunity. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I decided to write about it. Because I thought if I could just help one really woman um, identify a box that she may not realize yeah. she's in. Because a lot of boxes I, I didn't even recognize was a, was a box. Until you know there's options, you don't, you're not even aware that you're in a box. Yeah. So, so my goal was just to 
help one one reader maybe get out yeah. of the box, see something differently in the way they live their lives. That's amazing. Could you give us one example from the book of a box you were in so that we can get people's wheels turning about, like you said, a lot of times we're not even aware we're in a box. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, so many, but um, so like the good mom box, you know, I have two daughters. Mm-hmm. I was um, 32 and I found myself, well, actually the singles box too. So I'm 32 years old. Yeah. I've got two daughters um, and I find myself suddenly single mm. and um, like even just the singles box. I mean, I'm, I'm now 55 and I'm single. And when people, yeah. when people yeah. hear that I'm single, they immediately go into, oh my goodness, let me set you up with so-and-so almost like it's a condition <laughs> that, that we have to cure. <laughs> no, truly it is. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't even recognize it until I was in the box. And that, cause I was, I married at a young age. So I didn't see that, but mm-hmm. oh my gosh, there's so much. It's just so interesting to watch how people react to single women or people. Yeah. Single people. I don't know if yeah. they, they do the same thing to men, but it's, it is definitely a condition that needs fixed. And right. so that's a box, but the good mom box, that was one that plagued me for, I think it actually plagued me more because I was a single mom. So I feel like I overcompensated because I wanted to make sure society look, you know, that my children didn't come up from a broken home. Their mom is, is overly involved, you know, did all this, but then it would, it would happen. It culminated in one after or one weekend when Maria, my, my older one had, she's in first grade and had a project due and it was a poster, poster board, first yeah. real project in first grade. And I basically did the poster board for her. Right. And I right. really overly involved. And it looked yeah. like an adult did the poster board. Yeah. <laughs> and and so we bring it in the next the Monday morning and I'm watching these other kids bring in lugging in their poster boards. I mean, they're ripped and the corners are torn and somebody looked like they had stomped on theirs. And, yeah. You know, and then their handwriting was going down a mountain. Like I had, I had painstakingly put the lines in so Maria sure. would write, you know, whatever. And, but then when I walked into the classroom and I saw Mrs. Walton and these kids were lined up beaming about their project. Oh. And then I looked at my daughter and she wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. And she knew she didn't do that. Pro- you know, she yeah. knew she didn't do that. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What is, what is my goal here? And I, I went back to the car and I was tears coming down my eyes. I'm like, here, I'm trying to be this good mom. Yeah. And I was, I was incredibly judging those kids' moms as I walked in the school. Like right. how could they send their children to school with those poster boards? Right. And I thought, I'm the one who's so got this messed up. <laughs> you know, yeah. if I want my child to know she can do it on her own, why am I doing it for her? Mm. You know, so I, I, and I had to recognize that the reason I was doing it was because I wanted Mrs. Walton to like me and, Mm -hmm. and feel like I was a good mom. And I was putting that over the long-term well-being of my child. Oh, Betsy, you're not alone, right? (laughs) I I know any of us, right? It's such a powerful, whether it's the singles box, people are trying to fix you, the good mom and wanting to, you know, be even as a working mom, not single. It was like, oh, then I need to make sure I'm also volunteering. And I'm also, (laughs) because then I'm not like the jerk mom who's putting her career ahead of her kid, right? So I, oh, wow, do I hear you? And Thank you for um, for the authenticity. That's something you'll all get to read in this book. That you know, Betsy, you you brought yourself. You're not just putting a public veneer. And I didn't. You didn't just write a book. Like I'm. You know, you're you're wildly successful in your business. We met through Strategic Coach with you know Dan Sullivan, and we're just a few women in a room of a hundred men and a little a little <laughs> pod of us of us women that you know kind of bonded together. And um and there's so many boxes and the burden when you talked about the fatigue yeah. of being in these boxes and how kind of everyone loses when we stay in the box, right? Mm-hmm. That's something I take from your book. And mm-hmm. and I knew when you talked about, I think, I think, I don't know if you said it exactly this way, but when you said, you know, I, let's talk, cause I, I think I got a book or I, I'm feeling like I'm gonna do a book. And, and I knew you were, you were a person with such grace and such wisdom that people were coming to in the room, men mm-hmm. and women for guidance and wanting to learn from. And, and it felt so natural. Like, of course we need, we need a book, you know, with mm-hmm. your wisdom. So people who aren't agents in your brokerage or, you know, working with you yeah. in your phil- uh, philanthropic work, like that they, that they, that we all still get to benefit from this wisdom. So I'm so grateful that you mm-hmm. said yes to that spark. And that mm-hmm. is especially not thinking 
you know, I'm a writer and I need, you know, that wasn't like mm-hmm. your career isn't being a writer. And yet, you know, you are a thought leader and I, and I've seen you in, in rooms where people can mm-hmm. sense that and, and want to learn more. And so I'm so grateful for you writing this and helping illuminate for all of us, like that we, that we might be in a box or boxes in most cases. Um, but most importantly, how to break free. And so mm-hmm. what do you want for people when they read the book? What's your, what's your hope for that one woman or maybe millions of us that you, yeah. that you support? What do you hope for your reader? I want them to feel alive and energized and almost like a lens has been cleared, you know, yeah. that you, you know, you cleaned your glasses or, you know, that you're, you're seeing things fresh and new for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I have this, I actually have this photo and this is, this was my goal. This was, this is, a, you know, this was my goal when yeah. I saw this picture. Yeah. As I, this was before I wrote my book, before I started my yeah. journey. I'm like, this is, I have a, a picture of myself almost identical to this yes. that I had totally forgotten about. Yeah. This is, where did I lose this along the way? Mm. Um, you know, I think when you're, when you're such, when you're so little, you're not in any boxes, you know? That's what I'm saying. Look at her starfish <laughs> pose, taking up space I know. in the rain, just loving every minute being who she is. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, so that's so what beautiful. I want for everybody. Yeah. That's what we want. We want to be you know, out in the rain, full on, you yeah. know, being... so Betsy, what, um, the book just came out and congratulations. Mm-hmm. It's been an honor to, for our editors to work, you know, for our editorial team to work with you, for, for us all to work with you and support this book. What is, what is, uh, or will be soon new and different for you because now you have a book, right? You already have had multi-successful businesses. You didn't have anything you needed to prove. You already have made millions of dollars. Like, you know, it's not like any of that stuff is mm-hmm. uncharted territory for you. So what, what is this book going to open up for you? Um, what are you most excited about now that you have a book? Well, it's opened up a whole new world. Like my whole world is, is, it was real estate. And so it's opened up a whole segment of people that I would not normally interact with. And I have so enjoyed just being on podcasts and being on TV segments and things and getting to talk about real, like real things that affect us on a personal level is so different than my day-to-day life. And I really enjoy that. I've always wanted my, one of my other goals is to get a psychology degree. I've always wanted that. And so I feel like that's moving in that direction um, where people can be authentic and real. And so that excites me. Um, So, so doing more of that and Mm -hmm. creating, I, I do see myself creating some type of class or master class or workshop yes. where I can help women um shed these shed these boxes. Um and, and and I also would like to point out not only are we in boxes, we do put other people in boxes. You yes. know and, and I do that myself. And so helping people just not be so compartmentalized and in, in the way they think. So I would love to start doing that and exploring that. So I've got some things in the works to to start. Amazing. Right. Because we talk about in our, you know, Thought Leader Academy pathway that many of you listening know, you know, you write the book and then it's going out and speaking. Betsy, you're now a media topic expert. You've been on what, what are some of the shows that have been your favorites? I don't, I mean, I don't really, I just been on a lot of news programs. Like yeah. in New York, they sent me the news shows. I don't, yeah. honestly, I don't even watch TV. So <laughs> I know it's, it's the irony of like going on the media, but I don't watch it. So yes, we've been on a lot of the New York news shows and, and yeah. those things. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, going out and speaking podcasts, you know, interviews and things like this. Right. And then you're, you're expanding that audience right? Yeah. This is, we think about the journey, the thought leader pathway that, that we teach and then um, monetizing your mission. Obviously you very monetized, but you know, knowing that you can have these, this course or this workshop or retreat yeah. or whatever it is where we're going to break out of boxes together. Yeah. Um, and then, and then that evolves your leadership, right? Which is our legacy, right? If we yeah. think about our, our thought leader pathway and you're, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're right there making, making this rise, you know, this mm-hmm. journey. And so um, is there, is there anything else you want people to know in terms of whether it's you've given us a lot to think about where am I in a box? Where might I be putting others in a mm-hmm. box? Mm-hmm. Whether it's coworkers, team, children, clients, yeah. partners, people in the world, society, right? And then is there anything else you want us to know to get us started on this vision? Of course, we're going to give you all the the link so you can get the book and read Breaking Boxes and get all of the, the wealth of wisdom in here. Yeah, I would just say um, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I get out of a box once I know I'm in one? Mm-hmm. And what I found that for me is that I stayed in boxes and this is not like I'm not, I haven't arrived. I haven't mastered this. This is a journey that I'm still on. But what I found is that when I have the resistance of 
removing myself from a box that no longer serves me comes from fear. And so if I can just identify exactly what it is I'm fearing. So usually it's fear of failure, which that one I master, I truly have mastered. I, I long ago realized there's, that's a box that we put, but that's truly a box that is made up, doesn't need to exist in our world. I don't I teach this to my agents. There's, there's truly no such thing as failure. It's, it's lessons, it's learnings, it's unexpected pivots, but there's no failure. Mm. So that one, I, I don't, that, that one doesn't um, plague me anymore, but fear of loss is the one that plagues mm. me sometimes. And it's loss mm. of either status. Like when I went, when I decided to leave the healthcare profession and go into real estate, real estate, you need a GED and a one week right. class. And my parents were like, you're going to go do what? You know, mm. they, they, and, and so that was a big fear of mine, fear of status, mm-hmm. loss, fear of social connection, um, and fear of financial insecurity. And so yeah. I worked myself through, okay, well, worst case scenario for each of those three, and I, I work it through on paper. For me, when I put yes. my fears on paper, it's so much, it's like, it makes it all very doable. And so then I, I put it on paper. I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, X, Y, and Z happened. Can I live with that? Not a problem. So and then I move forward. So I, if I could just encourage, because you asked me what I would want to share with people is that, is that if, if you can't figure out how to get out of the box, it, most likely there's a fear attached to that. Figure out what the fear is, walk yourself through the worst case scenario. And mm. there are not, there are very few things you're not going to be able to say, yeah, I got that. So there's your homework, everybody. All right. We're going to go get Betsy's book so you can get the whole process and all the great, gorgeous storytelling that's in here. And you're going to identify everyone. There's no chance none of us are at least putting ourselves in a box or have let someone put us in a box or putting someone else in a box. Let's identify a box and then do the work to break out of that box by looking at what's the fear that's keeping me, you know, in this box, even if it was unconscious, right? And um, and then realizing worst case scenario, like I got this, I can do it because the fear is never, it never has substance, right? It never ultimately has the the power that we think it does. Betsy, thank you. Thank you for bringing this work to a greater audience. So all of us that aren't in real estate in Florida, um, I hope everything is well in Florida now. Also just sending everyone in your state so much love. And um, I'm really excited for the, the greater uh, legacy that you're building through the work that you'll do to help us really specifically with the unboxing, as we say, uh, work. Okay. So thank you so much. And we'll let everybody know, um, just check the show notes for how you can connect with Betsy. Um, of course, how you can get the book. Betsy, best place that you like people to follow you, reach yeah, you, read about you? I'm on Facebook and Instagram with my name at Betsy Papine. And then my website is BetsyPapine.com. Beautiful, everybody. Go check Betsy out and we'll uh, we'll be excited to celebrate all of the big things you'll be up to next. Thank you.